smile for me. Won't you just smile for me? Oh, 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 you look so much better when you smile. Happy Friday, y'all. Welcome back. In today's lesson, I'm going to show you how to create a very simple flyer. Here's the catch. You wouldn't have to take off the background of the subject. I'm going to show you a little trick that you can apply to blend in the subject with the foreground. If you're ready, let's begin. So the first thing you want to do is open up your canvas. So once you have your canvas open, we're going to set our background. So I'm going to bring in the background. Yeah, I know I've used this before, but I love it. So I want to use it again. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to drag this into our working file. I'm going to drop it here and I'm going to move it all the way down to the bottom. And I'm going to press Control T to transform my selection. And I'm going to just drag it to fill up my space. And once that is done, I'm going to double click to deselect. So I'm going to add another element to my background. I'm going to first of all create a new layer and I am going to keep my paint bucket. I'm going to change it to gradient. We're going to use the gradient tool and I already have my background color set for me. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pick up my marquee tool and I'm going to draw a rectangle just on one side, just like that. And then I'm going to fill that in with my gradient tool. So I'm going to drag from one end and I'm going to release. And I'm going to repeat that so I get a more deeper at the bottom and a lighter color at the top. So now that we have this, I'm going to press Control D to deselect, Control T to transform my selection. And I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to rotate let's say about this much and I'm going to now stretch my element. I'm going to stretch it down just a little. I'm going to double click and once it's set, I'm going to use my move tool. I'm going to move it and set it in the right location. I'm going to add a little bit of a shadow effect to my element. I'm going to right click, go to the blending options. And what you want to do is to choose drop shadow. And once you choose the drop shadow, you can decrease opacity. I'm going to double click on it. So you see, as you can see, I've set my opacity at 38. So the shadow is not so strong. If I take it all the way to 100, you can see that it's so dark and I don't want that. I just want a little bit of a shadow effect. And I like my distance. I'm going to increase it a little. I'm going to click OK. So I have my background set. One more thing. I'm now going to take my background fill. I'm going to reduce it a little so it sort of bleeds into the other background. But yes, though, you see the new element popping. I like it. It's popping. So what we want to do now is to bring in our subject. And here is the little trick that I'm going to show you. So we're going to go here. And then I'm going to drag in my subject. I'm going to drag in my subject. And I'm just going to set my subject somewhere here. I'm going to press Control T. And I'm just going to scale my subject. I'm going to move my subject up just a little. I'm going to double click. And then I'm going to move my subject all the way back here. And now, this is what I'm going to show you. 
So if you have a subject and the background is not busy, what you can do is you can actually blend in the subject with your foreground and you don't have to cut out the subject. Cutting out a subject can be a little tedious if you haven't done it before or if you are a beginner. For somebody like me, it can take me about three minutes to cut out the subject or even let's say five minutes. But for you, it might take longer. So this is the trick that you can apply. That is if you have a solid background with your subject. So you want to change the opacity. You're just going to take down the opacity just a little. So your subject basically bleeds into your foreground. So as you can see, you don't even notice that you don't even notice that um, there is a difference between the subject and the foreground. The only thing that gives it away is this little line right here. And I'm going to show you what to do. You're going to take your eraser tool. You want to make sure that your hardness is at zero. Make sure that you increase the size of your eraser. And now this is what we're going to do. We're going to just erase a little bit. It's too hard. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to increase the size. And now just watch and see how this blends in into the background. So you don't even notice that these are two different elements put together. You would think that the, the subject is basically on one background. And I'm going to just take this down a little so we have a little bit of a, an interest on the other side too. So now that we have our background set, now we can go in and begin to add our um, text and then the different elements. So I'm going to pick up my text tool and I'm going to click within my subject. And I'm just going to begin to type. And I'm going to highlight and I'm going to change this. I'm going to move my text. I'm going to press Control T and I'm going to transform my selection. And I'm going to set it down. I'm going to set it somewhere here. I'm going to scale it just a little bit more. Just like that. I'm going to double click. And now what I want to do, I'm going to show you a little trick. White font on a flyer pops, but sometimes depending on what is on the background, it's hard to read it. So what you can do is that you're going to add a little bit of a shadow to the font, which will make it still pop. But at the same time, you're going to keep your white color. So I'm going to click on that. Oh, that is, this is too much. So we're going to double click and go within our drop shadow. And we're going to take the spread. We're going to bring it down. And the distance, we're going to take that down as well. I'm going to decrease the size. So you can still see, you can still see the text because of the shadow effect. So I'm going to click OK. So now that we have this, I'm going to add another. I'm going to move this up a little. And now I'm going to bring in my second element. So I'm going to click on another. I'm going to click on my text and I'm going to type in. I'm going to select that. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to right click Control T, Control T to activate my selection, and I'm going to scale it. And once I have it scaled, I'm going to double click to deselect. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a shadow effect. I'm going to right click, go to blend in options. And I'm going to add a shadow effect. And I'm going to double click within, and then I'm going to increase this one. I'm going to increase the opacity a little so we pick up more on our shadow. 
I'm going to increase the spread a little. And I'm going to click OK. So this is just something that you have to play with so you get the desired effect. And I'm just going to move this on top of my other text. Ooh, I like it. It looks really nice. So you can do so many things, you know, to get um, the desired effect. One thing that I forgot and I want to do is I want to go back to this layer. I'm going to add a gradient effect. I'm going to click on my adjustment layers and I'm going to choose gradient and I am going to add a purple. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to change the color. I'm going to click on the stop and I'm going to change that to a purple. Like a rich purple. And I'm going to uh, a little bit darker. And I'm going to click OK and click OK. And I'm just going to close that. So what we have, um, so what I can even do with this, I'm just going to decrease the opacity a little. And that's going to collapse that. And I'm going to go to this file. That's why I have all the other elements that I want to bring in. So I'm going to right click on my logo and I'm going to drag that into our working file. I'm going to position it right there. And I'm going to press Control T to activate it. I'm going to increase it just a little. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to pick up my rectangular marquee tool and I'm going to draw a rectangle beneath right here. And I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to fill that in with a white. I'm going to press Control D to deselect. I'm going to pick my text tool and I'm going to type in the word. I'm going to type in the word life. I'm going to select that and I'm going to change the font. And I'm going to now press Control, Control T, transform it. I'm going to change the color. I'm going to select it. And I'm going to double click on my color and I'm going to pick like a, a deeper red, a rich deeper red. I'm going to click OK and I'm going to make sure that I have my move tool and I'm going to press Control T. I'm going to scale this down a little. And I'm going to move it and set it right there. Yes, we are going live. So I'm going to change my color. Fill is too, too deep. So I'm going to use my move tool and I'm going to double click on my color and then make it a little bit richer in terms of the red. Okay, so now that we have this, I'm going to bring in my zoom logo i'm going to right click and then choose the right element i'm going to drag it into my working file and then you set it right next to it i'm going to press ctrl t to scale it just a little bit i'm going to double click to deselect okay so the next thing we want to do is to add the meeting id since this is an online meeting so I'm going to add another text. I'm going to type it in. And I'm just going to type meeting ID. Oops. Let me change the font. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to select the meeting ID. I'm going to change the style. I'm going to take it down to um, like that. And I'm going to also right click on the layer and I'm going to add uh, a shadow effect. 
I'm going to click on that. That is too much. So we are going to decrease that. We're going to take that down. And the size, I'm going to take it down as well. I'm going to click OK. I noticed that instead of ID, I'm saying N. So the D needs to be corrected. I'm going to space it out just a little. And I'm going to use my Move tool. I'm going to move this and set it right there. I'm going to press Control T to activate it, and I'm just going to scale it. And notice how I have everything lined up right there. And also notice how I have everything lined up. You know, a flyer is like a book that somebody is reading. So you want to guide their eyes so that they can really get the information you want to convey in five seconds without them being confused of what you're trying to say. So the last thing we want to do is to add the date. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a duplicate of this text that we already have. I'm going to pull that down. And I'm just going to change it. So I'm going to pick up my text tool and I'm just going to highlight. I'm going to change the font. And I'm going to also highlight this and I'm going to change it to black. I'm going to right click and then take off the drop shadow on this so you get a very good pop. Also, I'm going to press Control T and I'm going to increase that a little so it lines up with the text above, I'm going to double click. I'm going to add one more thing. I'm going to add service. So I'm going to click and then I'm going to make another duplicate of this. I'm going to move this all the way up and I'm going to retype in the word service. So I'm going to use my move tool, control T, and I'm just going to scale this just a little. Take it down, double click, release. I'm going to move it down just a little. I'll move it up here. I hope you found this tutorial interesting. Please do like, comment, subscribe. Also, don't forget to turn on the notification bell for all future uploads. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.